Hi there and welcome back to another tutorial. This time I have a full painting tutorial for you here on Procreate and I will be using Procreate original brushes only so you don't need any special brush packs or anything. I've chosen this reference photo Pinterest and I will link the original place where I found it down below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at this photo. Um, as you can see, there's quite a dark background in green, so I'm going to go ahead and just do the background in this nice bluish tinted green color. And from here, I'm going to start painting in the tree that is kind of in the foreground, as I will be using that to kind of reference myself across my painting and use it as a guide as to where colors belong. As always, when I use references, you know, or when you use them, it is completely up to you how much you want to copy the reference image and learn from that, or if you want to change anything, that is completely up to you. I am not going to follow it too closely, but I'm going to try and get it so that it is kind of obvious it's from the reference photo, because I'm also trying to learn how to kind of get those colors out of the image that I can see and kind of eyeball them by myself so it's good practice for me. So in terms of brushes for the tree itself I've chosen the medium hard airbrush and then I cleaned it up with the studio pen um, using it as an eraser and now I'm going to go ahead using turpentine I am um, because it's a nice like spongy brush I'm going to brush in the background light area and because it has a texture to it, it will kind of help me build onto that texture. What I like to do is I kind of just layer lots of details on top of each other until they create a nice density. I'm now also using the turpentine brush to, with a dark green color, put in the shading area where I'm going to go ahead and fill that in darker later on. I'm now just putting in the rough shapes for the picture, from the picture into this. So the light and the dark and trying to orientate myself where, what is. And then from then you can kind of build it up. I hope that my explanations make sense, but if they don't at any time, and I'm sure they will at some point not make sense because I'm falling over my words, please um, write any questions into the comments and I will get back to you. Okay, so now I know kind of where roughly the light and the dark is. On the left side of the picture, I'm going to go ahead and start with the bottom floor of the forest and just making sure that I've got like proportionally what I'm doing in the right places. And then I can also build up from the floor or the ground of the forest to the side bushes and you know, so it makes it a bit simpler. I don't know. I feel like getting the basics down from the reference picture when I'm doing something like this first for example just really really basic shapes outlines and whatnot and then building up from that seems to work best for me and now this might seem quite dark that I'm doing and I'm using an airbrush I believe which is why it's quite soft I'm not doing any hard strokes with this but it's quite dark because I'm already trying to introduce the darkness or the shadow and the blackness from the right side of the reference picture which will come in and obviously it's sticking out but you can kind of uh, start to blend those things in together by adding more dark to the left side of the picture and etc. Once you've got those colors in you can really see when they make sense and when they don't in my opinion so that's why I'm starting like this. So for a little while it will be all about getting the different colors down and making sure they make sense on the painting and um, just by blocking the colors in very roughly we'll be taking care of blending them and adding details later but it's definitely about the rough part of the picture at the minute. As you can see I'm also using a lot greener shades rather than more yellow shades on the ground. Um, that's because I prefer the greener shades personally and um, just finding the balance between the dark and the light, uh, I've just kind of stuck to that one color palette. As you might have already noticed or what you'll see now is I'm adding a lot of warm color to where the light is going to fall and just around where the light areas are between the light and the dark I'm adding like orange or red in more intense color values and that kind of gives 
the light some warmth on the ground so i really like doing that and uh, yeah it also feels a little bit more realistic plus in the shadow i usually have some sort of blue or a lot more grayer tap tones to signify that it's cooler even in the reference photo you can see that there is some grass on the path itself so I'm trying to get it a little bit more natural looking on my side and what I really like about the reference picture on the left is the shadows that are kind of stretching across the path and they are like falling into all the dips and stuff along the way so it creates a bit more of um, depth and just interesting landscape so I really wanted to get that into my picture as well. Now to bring uh, some more of that darkness and to make it look a little bit more natural on the right front, I'm going to bring it into the background. As you can see in the reference picture, there is quite a lot of dark and black, even on the left side. It's not quite black, um, so I didn't choose black black. I think I chose like a, a lighter green black. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm also going ahead and putting that textured brush onto the right side where a lot of the bush is showing in as shadow. Continuing from now, I will just put in a lot more of that color that I can see on the left. I'm trying to get that really intense yellow into the highlights and that is enabled by the colors that lie around it. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that or if you've already probably noticed that when there is a really intense yellow light color, then often there are some really warm intense colors around it and they just intensify it. That's a lot of the word intense but um, that's why I know how important those arounding line colors are. Okay so I hope that made sense I feel like I'm stumbling over my words but as you may, might have seen just now I have also changed the color of the tree into a darker one of it so you can always edit that if you have the separate layers going. Um, I don't always use layers so as you can see as well with time going on, I will stop choosing different layers. I will literally just new layer all the time to save my progress, but I won't really sort it. So I think it's always good to sort it, but I'm just the type of person that doesn't really, once I get into the creative flow, I just forget about that stuff and I just paint. And so it doesn't really matter to me too much, but like now, you know, when you want to adjust values of different layers, obviously that's super helpful. I feel like the more details and texture you have in the background, the better the perception of depth becomes in paintings. So um, I really like to put a lot of details in as always, but the background I feel like is just more important than ever really for me now in the stage of painting that I'm in, generally speaking, um, skills wise. While I was painting this, I wasn't quite sure why I wasn't able to get the same vibrancy and intensity of color into the light parts, and that's because I just chose a completely different color spectrum. They In the reference picture there is a lot of orange and yellow highlights, yellow, yellow, and not just green yellow, and I decided, or I chose from the beginning to remain in the more olive and yeah, yellow, greenish part. To remain in there and that's why I wasn't able to get the same warmth in but I did end up like now adding some more orange to it and just trying to figure it out so yeah that is just something that I'm kind of realizing while I'm recording my voice over this. I feel like the painting base is already coming together quite well so it's all details and that from then on really just adding all of those to make it more realistic to add that depth and that that just beautiful touch maybe even 
um, but I'm way off now. I mean, as you can see, the video is quite a bit longer and for now, I'm just kind of sketching, sketching in where the light is going to fall in. I will take those light rays out later because I don't think they look that nice, but it's nice to have that guide as an orientation. I am using the turpentine brush quite a lot for this because it does give a nice spongy um, pattern slash text to it and I can build onto that texture later with the Procreate Studio Pen for example or some finer pen that will allow me to put in the details manually by hand. But what I really like about textures is just they are random so they just go and like you can see now I'm erasing parts of that tree where it feels like it's just too big and overpowering and yeah that's the great thing about the texture just comes on and then you can decide what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. I do apologize for the autofocus often choosing my hand and the pen instead of the painting to focus on. I am working on getting a new setup so hopefully that will allow me to show you this stuff better close up and in more or higher quality. Okay, bit by bit I'm adding details to the various bits of the painting and now I'm going back to the floor slash ground of the forest. What I'm doing now is literally blending in the colors that I've blocked in earlier very ra very loosely and what that will allow me to is, well, first of all, it will add the mid-tones, more mid-tones between the light and the dark where it blends it so I don't actually have to add all the colors that are coming out of it now which is really nice it just makes it a lot look a lot more natural and smooth but also once that's blended i can start putting in more texture and details to actually highlight what it is grass grass is for the grass area etc and whatnot and pebbles on the road or on the rocky parts of the ground so yeah i really like the blending method with stuff like this just putting in all the rough stuff and then letting it do the work by itself i feel like it also just creates a smoother transition between for example grass and the and the rocky ground or the shadow and the light it just makes everything yeah really nice and smooth Now going in with an airbrush again, I will be adding some more color to where it's lacking and to kind of create some more shadow and intensity of colors. As you can see, where the light is hitting the grass, it's not as intense as I'd like it yet. And I'm also going to add some more shadow to the grass where it falls onto the path to make it stick out a little bit more as it's not as flat as the ground is itself. Okay, so back to the foreground now. Using the Studio Pen original brush from Procreate, I'm going in with the same color that I have in the front for the silhouettes of the leaves with that same dark color and I'm going to intentionally set all the little dots that will create the leaves and I'm trying to give it a more natural outline and yeah, that is going to be the name of the game for a minute. In the reference photo you can see that there are also branches sticking out so I'm going in and just putting in branches all over the painting as I go as it gives it a lot more of a natural feel to it. Details wise, I'm also going to continue detailing in the middle ground of the picture where the emphasis of the light is and just dot by dot trying to add those different lights and shades and trying to give it that more polished look.
as you can see I'm orientating myself at, by the reference photo or image of the different leaf details so as you can see in that reference photo the light is surrounded by little dark bits of course to kind of um, remain in tree leaf shape so I'm going to go ahead and try and do the same sometimes using the color pick tool to choose the colors from the image to remain as close as possible to some of that and also just eyeballing it to be honest so yeah I'm just trying to build up that texture now When adding more branches and details in the background, remember that it's not as saturated colors that are in the background, so they're not as intense. And that is the same for shadow and light. Obviously, when it falls somewhere, the shadow of the branches or the silhouette of the branches in the background with lighters will be less dark. So that's why I'm using like a lighter green dark tone that is not quite black. I hope that makes sense. Using the studio pen I'm going to concentrate on defining the shadows that are within the bush and within the forest. sun rays that I mentioned earlier I'm going to blur a little bit using the Groschen blur and then I'm going to build up onto the highlights and the dark and the shadow and the details of the forest in the background. Now going into the background with the highlights, I'm using the studio pen first and then the turpentine brush for some more random detail and I'm just going to build up the colors in the background there and the light that is reflecting off the leaves in the background. Even though there is a lot less saturation of colors in the background, when I'm going to add the light later on, that will kind of wash it out anyways, so I'm not too worried about um, painting using colors that are desaturated, so I'm just going to go ahead and I added the shadows back down there that are slightly darker. Just like in the previous grass tutorials, I'm taking a finer brush like the studio pen and I'm just penciling in different grass, single grass elements um, and from working from the light into the darker and I'm kind of making sure that the midtones cross over each other so it gives a more natural look.
when it comes to adding texture to the ground of the floor and to earth and soil, I'm using the stucco brush that you can find in Procreate already and I'm just choosing the colours, the mid-tone colours between light and dark and going over it very gently with it so it creates that texture without any harsh lines like here. You can always go and erase parts of it like I am now and just make sure that you've got that on a separate layer. But I feel like that does add a lot of that texture that I'm looking for that is like that random, rocky, like pebbly texture. The key to this, in my opinion, is that you are choosing not only just light and dark to go over the vice versa parts of it, like the other ones, um, but also mid-tones to create that natural look for the ground. I'm also using the studio pen and um, like finer brushes and pencils like the 6B pencil in Procreate to create little dots and that on the ground myself and that just adds to the bigger detail like here for example. While I'm going over these details and just adding details everywhere all over the painting where I just kind of see like spots where I feel like I need to add some more, I'm noticing that the color values of the entire painting aren't right. As you can see in the reference picture, um, essentially that part where the shadow hits the road, it's a lot darker than it was in my painting. So I've decided to adjust that by using a soft brush, like an airbrush, for example, and going over it with a dark, Color of any sort. I used a dark green but I decided to use black and then you can just adjust the opacity of that layer and you can adjust with an eraser depending where you want to have the shadow and where not. So I did that and I felt like it really added to the entire painting by just intensifying that shadow on the path. As usual, when I add any color over or light and I overlay it on top of the other detail, the detail below that layer becomes a little bit blurry and out of focus. So I'm going ahead and I'm just going to adjust it where it needs, not just in that area, but generally details, details, details. <laughs> gently working myself up the scale with light colors so I'm trying to go lighter and lighter by building the base of mid-tones and lighter and darker colors I'm kind of 
inching forward and then adding those very cautiously, those very light colors because they are the ones that are going to really stand out and to have the right position of them for me is one of the crucial things in a painting. It's really fun to kind of experiment where to put them and to kind of just choose them intentionally. So I really enjoy this part of the painting. Similarly with the light on the path, as you might have noticed before, I'm also kind of just adding light as I go to match the painting around me and to kind of make sure that some parts stand out as they are supposed to, like the really light parts and give them the full center of attention. In the bottom left corner in the front of the painting you can see that I've added quite an intense red tone and that is what I meant with adding like those um, really warm colors where the light shines and hits them because I want to have that feeling of warmth in it. I will adjust that part because it feels like it sticks out quite a bit and it doesn't look very natural so I will make sure that blends in like the other parts of the floor as well. And I'm also making sure to add some more detail of the forest floor or slash ground in the foreground by adding like small plants and different textures to that by still using the pencils and the brushes that I've used before but just kind of adding different shapes. Adding all these details, I feel like the photo, <laughs> the painting really comes to life and it nearly feels like a photo to me, but um, I felt like the background was a little bit too busy and that's kind of where the selection comes in for how much um, detail you really want to add. And the background is one of those things when you have light and you have other things like coming into the foreground between the background and the foreground. It just uh, really detracts from the detail you added in the front, so I decided to just make it a little bit more even. I'm not sure if you could see that exactly right there, but uh, once that was kind of in, it felt a little bit less busy in there in the background, a little less texture.
You might remember at the beginning I mentioned that I didn't use a complete black um, out of the color spectrum to do the foreground on the right. Well, I chose the color black at some point with a studio pen like here and now you can really see the difference between the green dark color I used and actual black. So I went ahead and I kind of filled those bits in. Once again, my hand kind of covers some of it, so I uh, made sure to speed it up a little bit at that point because it's just me putting the dots and down. And I used a turpentine brush as per usual at the minute uh, for some more texture up there. As you will see with the reference photo, not just the light and the colors vary, but obviously also the detail. So I just ended up adding way more detail and bushes at the bottom where the forest floor meets the trees. Um, so that kind of will also fade a little bit in the background with the light, but uh, yeah, I just really enjoy detailing. Okay, so this is where I feel like the detailing is kind of done and comes to an end and now I will try and experiment a little bit with the lighting because that will change things again and might also change where I need to add some more detail and uh, for that I begin with trying out different colors in the add mode layer and then seeing how that looks, choosing a color and then kind of uh, very loosely just adding it to the picture and seeing where it fits and where it doesn't it's all a little bit of an experimentation and once that's kind of done i know what to subtract and what to do so i kind of add it where it's necessary and take it away where it isn't and also i've noticed adding different colors of light um 
that will just enhance the entire thing for me because I really enjoy having all colors of the spectrum in a picture. That's not always uh, like uh, doable, of course. Like turquoise or whatever sometimes just look really out of place, but other times they can really add to it, so I try all different colors out. Another thing to keep in mind while watching this is that I, um, my phone does record those colors as a, a lot more extreme than they are or intense so yeah I mean I will add it obviously the painting in here as a picture into the video right here but as you can see that's just completely different um, and I'll also do a video of the painting close up at the end as usual so you can see how it looks on camera but yeah you will see a big difference there My thought process with this lighting is kind of that obviously there is like the light um, accumulating at the top of the tree where all the leaves are lit into this bright yellow and green and then the light comes through and hits the path before the shadow and then there's a lo lot of light in the back so I added some blue lighting in the background for the depth and the distance feeling that you get with blue lighting and then the warm colors for the front. As I might have mentioned before, once that light comes in onto the picture, it lies on top of all the detail and it can really um, diffuse it. So I like to add some more detail after and maybe even make it brighter, the highlights, so that it really sticks out and is really lit up. That is um, something that I really like doing in pictures like this. I'm going to add some fairy lights because I absolutely adore them and they do add a lot of magic for me in these paintings so yes they are a must I think I don't really want to do it without them <laughs> so yeah we're nearly at the end um, I will put that picture back up into the video once I've completed that um, painting properly or I'm closer to the end and then you'll see the difference between what the camera has recorded and what it actually looks like I did kind of try to rush this painting because I knew it was going to be long and editing takes me forever but the total track time in the end came to 3 hours and 40 minutes with a total strokes number of 23,693 so yeah it is not bad you know I really try to get that thing going so um, yeah um, I don't even know if anybody is still here at this point listening because to be honest it is a very long video and I'm not sure how good my videos are to follow. I feel like I've improved over the last months with the YouTube videos, but um, I'm obviously still a beginner and learner. So yeah, as always, any concerns, requests or whatever down in the comments and I will read them all. But in the case that you have been following it and you've made it this far, thank you so much for your support and um, your interest. And I hope that you enjoyed this or I don't know what exactly, you know, I feel like I've been looking at this video and this painting for so long now that I, yeah, I've had enough of it. <laughs> I hope you haven't, but yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So I hope it's brought something to you, something intriguing, interesting or entertaining. So yeah, thank you so much for your support.
Okay, so this is the close-up and the more I zoom in, obviously the more you can see it is not perfect. <laughs> that was never the aim, but it is funny for me to see sometimes how like I've got like random grasses sticking up from somewhere and it doesn't really make much sense, but you know, when you look at the big picture, it kind of makes sense to me, so I'm like, okay, whatever. But yeah, I'm really happy with the end result and that it came out the way it did. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done this tutorial. If you have, please tag me on Instagram so that I can see your wonderful artwork. Or yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.